Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info. So today we're talking about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. Um, a lot of stuff on this phone is, is pretty standard fare, uh, stuff that you would expect uh, in a 2020 flagship. You've got an IP rating, you've got wireless charging, you've got the latest and greatest processor, memory, uh, RAM, all that stuff. Um, there are really just three things specifically that set this phone apart from its contemporaries, from other flagship phones here in 2020. And that is the camera, that is the screen, and the fact that it also has a headphone jack. First, let's talk about the headphone jack. It has one. This actually matters a lot on this particular device because obviously that 3.5 millimeter jack can be used for a lot of the filming accessories, which is one of the big things this phone is hanging its hat on. So very good of Sony to include that. Next thing we want to talk about is the screen. The screen is a 4K screen. That's a ridiculous amount of pixels people to put into a phone. It's also got a 21 by 9 aspect ratio so it'll give you that cinematic aspect ratio when you hold the phone sideways it's very slim up and down and it's very wide across i'm not actually sure how good that is for watching certain types of content for example if you're watching a video like this or another youtube video or video that was meant more for a tv screen you're going to probably get some pretty significant black bars on the side but if you're watching theatrical type content, then it's going to look really, really nice on that screen. And I guess since this phone is really um, trying to push itself as a, as a cinematic content creator's phone, then perhaps that makes a little bit of sense. The only real downside of this screen is it does only run at 60 hertz. So, you know, with, with high refresh rates kind of being a, a thing right now in 2020 with a lot of phones, to have one that only has the, the traditional, the standard 60 hertz is a little bit surprising. A lot of apps, in fact, most apps can't utilize high refresh rates anyway, so I'm not really sure how big a deal this is. I'd love to get my hands on one of these things and actually see what this 4K screen looks like. I don't think losing the high refresh rate when you're working with that many pixels is that big a deal, but that's certainly something you have to be aware of if you're looking at this phone. Finally, the big thing that people are talking about on this phone, the people who've gotten their hands on early review copies of this phone, is the camera. The camera's supposed to be absolutely ridiculous. There's actually three different camera apps on this phone. You've got the standard camera app, which will look probably pretty similar to the camera app you have on your phone right now. It's got like a pro picture taking app that you know allows you to make a lot of fine adjustments and do a lot of different things with your picture taking. And then finally, and this is the big thing that I think everybody really keeps focusing on and talking about is the Pro Video app. And apparently the tools in that app are very similar to the tools that you find on Sony's really high-end cameras that a lot of your uh, really popular content creators on YouTube use. Uh, it's got the amazing focus features that those cameras have. It has um, a really nice built-in microphone. Um, this is something that, you know, these are things that Sony's really been famous for over the years with their cameras. Now apparently they're baking these very same features into a camera on a phone, which is really impressive and really exciting. If you could just get a really, really top flight camera built in your, into your phone, something that you would have to buy and use anyway, uh, that's a really neat opportunity. And just so you know, uh, this device will sell for $1,200, actually $1,199. Pre-orders start on June 1st. If you order before June 28th, you get a free pair of Sony's uh, top-end wireless earbuds, uh, the WF, I'm gonna look at this because they have really weird names for their earbuds, WF-1000XM3. These normally retail for 230 bucks. So if you were gonna get this phone, I would definitely probably get it, you know, order it before the June 28th deadline and at least get those. Those will offset the cost a little bit and the phone should start shipping by July 24th. So will this phone work in the US? Let's get the bad news out of the way first. Um, if you're on Sprint, um, I would say this phone is a no-go. It does use some of the frequency bands Sprint uses but it is not certified to be used on sprints network and phones that are not certified to work on sprints network often don't and personally i would steer clear of buying any new phones on sprint right now 
Anyway, some Sprint phones right now are losing their 5G functionality um, as T-Mobile continues to merge Sprint and T-Mobile's networks. We don't know what other kind of issues are going to come up. If I were you and you're a Sprint customer, I would just sit tight, wait till the merger is complete, which is rumored to be this summer, so hopefully not too much longer. And then at that time, get yourself a new phone then. As for the other three big US carriers, uh, the news is a little bit better, although it's not entirely rosy. So Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, it actually says on the Sony website, it will work on all those carriers, and they're not lying. Um, it uses all five of Verizon's 4G bands. It uses seven out of nine of AT&T's 4G bands, and it uses five out of six of T-Mobile's 4G bands. So you're gonna get pretty good 4G coverage on the three other carriers. It won't be the best coverage. It doesn't use all of their frequency bands, but it uses enough of them, and it uses all of their primary frequency bands that for most people, and obviously it, it varies a bit based on where you live, but for most people, this phone should work pretty well. What you've probably noticed up to this point is I have not mentioned 5G. This phone does not have 5G functionality in the US. Yeah, I know that seems weird. It's got the Snapdragon 865 processor. All phones with Snapdragon 865 processor should have 5G, right? Yes, it does have 5G, it just doesn't have 5G that will work here in the United States. It will work in Europe, it will work in other parts of the world, but the, the phone you buy on the Sony US website, and that's the version of the phone I assume you want. I don't even know if there are other versions of the phone. I think as of right now, there is just one global version. That version of the phone does not have 5G functionality here in the US, and if you don't believe me, go out on the Sony website for the phone. 5G is not mentioned anywhere. It's not mentioned on the spec sheet. It's not mentioned in the features. Normally, phones that are released in 2020 that have 5G, if you go out to the landing page of that company's website, 5G is plastered all over the place. No 5G on this phone. That doesn't mean that maybe at some point down the road, if it has, if it happens to have a compatible 5G frequency band, that it might not pick up some 5G, but you certainly can't count on it. Certainly, certainly not advertising it. So if 5G matters to you, you do not want this phone, especially at this $1,200 price point. That's a that's a hard pill to swallow to spend $1,200 on a phone uh, in 2020 that does not have 5G. So where does that leave this phone? Well, if you're a resident of the US, uh, you really probably aren't interested in this phone unless you are a hardcore camera guy or gal. You're somebody who really wants those great professional video features. Maybe you have a YouTube channel, maybe you're a vlogger. Um, if you're one of those type people, then I think this phone might still be worth a look because it does offer things that other phones don't. Well, that's all the information I have today about the Sony Xperia 1 Mach 2. If you have any thoughts about this device and its amazing cameras, please feel free to put those down in the comments. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Rando Tech Info signing out.